Or to the tyrant's den. Uh, for everyone who, oh, who are wondering where the heck the next Strong Bad email reaction is, uh, I, I had one that I recorded, but it was kind of a... There, there's some issues. I'm still learning to use the, the new webcam. Um, so, uh, another big catching up on my Strong Bad emails for Sunday. Another one of those. Uh, in the meantime, we, we've got a new extra history. World War Zero, the Crimean War, something which I'm pretty sure I know nothing about. So let's learn together. Boom. Boom. Jerusalem, Good Friday, Boom. 1846. Pilgrims and priests throng the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, eager to pray at the site of Christ's crucifixion. Now, most of the time, Holy Week falls separate. Oh, you said 1846, right? Christ's crucifixion. Church of the Holy Sepulchre, eager to pray at the... 1846. 1846, yes. Throng the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, eager to pray at the site of Christ's crucifixion. Now, most of the time, Holy Week falls separately on the Catholic and Orthodox religious calendars, oh. but this year, they coincide and everyone's here at once. It's packed and they're <laughs> shouting. The Orthodox priests arrived first, putting yeah, their only end well. on the altar. <laughs> then the Catholics, furious, try to yank it off and replace it with their own. Both insist they have a document from the Ottoman Sultan supporting mm, their right, mm. and suddenly a monk throws a punch. Within seconds, the seething crowd are shoving and kicking, smashing I, each I other. Can't, I can't even weigh in on this, or just uh, instantly get this. It doesn't help that... It's not, actually, it does help. It's easier to be neutral, because... I don't super care with crucifixes and candlesticks. Turkish bodyguards hired by wealthy pilgrims lay in with clubs. A priest swings an incense burner like a morning star. Nice. And people start drawing pistols. By the time Ottoman troops regain control, Less 40 noise. people are dead. Welcome to the start of the first modern war. Cool, cool, cool. Don't forget, as soon as Beautiful. you're done watching this episode, episode two is already up a week early and ad-free over on Let's Nebula. Let's see what makes this a modern war. That's what, that's what I'm curious about, because to, to, to me, there's there's the big dividing line between the kind of taxes we were using in World War One and the world, taxes we were using in World War Two. Um, unless he means modern in the same way that an English major would mean modern, where... Modern means actually it's a specific date around the 50s, and now it's just current. And I'm sure 30 years from now, current will just refer to the 19, the 2020s. And then they'll use something like present. And then 20 years later after that, there's like, oh, that's actually this is more of a post-present period. If anything, really, it's sort of a neo-modern. Uh, a neo-modern classical deconstruction, current, current, meta-current, uh, post-present uh, sort of thing that you're working on. It's like one of the three things that gave me the biggest headache getting a creative writing degree. The Crimean War is perhaps the most poorly named conflict in history. From its name, you might think that it was fought to settle a dispute over the Crimean Peninsula. It wasn't. Or you might assume that Crimea was the most important front of the war. But you'd be wrong again. I was say, I'm pretty sure... I don't, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm not a religious man, but I'm pretty sure the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the site of Jesus' uh, crucifixion was not in Crimea. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody who says otherwise. I mean, if, if it was a war that started over the site of the Golden Fleece, that'd be significantly more often. Awesome. also occurred along the Danube, in what's now Romania, in the Baltic Sea, and even in the far North Pacific. And though Ooh. the land operations in Crimea are the most famous, it was the naval operations that actually won the war. In fact, historians have... Which is interesting, given, given where it was fought. ...even proposed, mostly hypothetically, mind you, that it be renamed the Baltic War, or the Great Russian War, or... I mean, this, like... 
vast, vast majority of modern naval conflict that we've seen written about and talked about is all in the Atlantic and the Pacific, maybe in the Mediterranean, going Black Sea and Baltic Sea and quite possibly the, uh, the rivers connecting them. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. Even World War Zero. See, the Crimean War mm. was fought all across Europe, with Russia facing off against an allied coalition, including the... All across Europe, specifically points to places around the Black Sea. UK, France, and the Ottoman Empire. But it was also the first truly modern war, a conflict that began looking Time like modern. the Napoleonic past, but by its end, presaged the industrial slaughter of World War I. It would be the... F what do you mean the Napoleonic past? 18... It's not that far past. First steam-powered war, the first telegraph war, okay. the first war with photographs and war correspondence, okay, and it would kill okay. at least a half million people. And oh, supposedly, yeah, we kill so many people it all started in these over wars. who got to hold a pair of keys. Now, deadly brawls at holy sites, like yeah, the those one really in this cool episode's keys. opening, were not unusual in Ottoman-controlled Palestine. For centuries, mm -hmm. pilgrimage sites had flip-flopped between the Catholic and or modern Palestine Orthodox or churches historical based on Palestine. Faction obtained a decree. I mean, there, there were pits and pieces. The um, Byzantine Palestine was usually apparently okay, unless Crusaders got involved. From the Sultan, but in seven. From what I understand, not an authority. Ready. All right, I don't, I don't edit these. The so. 1757, the Ottomans okay, finally had enough and decreed a status. All right, should I mention, these are all unedited. You're getting the entire reaction right down to the commercials, baby. Quo, in which all six Christian churches would receive access to the religious sites and shared responsibility for their upkeep. And to give you an idea of how seriously this is taken, get this. When the status quo was declared, me. it stated that nothing in a site could be changed without the churches all agreeing to it. And as you can imagine, getting full agreement proved nearly impossible. Hence, things like this happened. Which is why it wasn't called the uh, mediocre schism. Or the meh schism. The day before the decree, a workman left his ladder at one of the churches, and it's been there ever since to this day. <laughs> oh, that's Things awesome. Things became even more complicated when Catholic France, who mostly had custody of these sites via treaties, turned away oh, from religion did. during the Revolutionary Period, Ooh. and Eastern Orthodox oh, Christians France. stepped Boy. in to fill the power vacuum. Then, when the French returned to Palestine in the 1830s, a series of confrontations over Christian the Christian Orthodox, site. worse clothes, but better beards. It's followed. Groups warred over who would get to fix structures since maintenance legally implied ownership. Things got tense. In 1842, the Orthodox Church erected a wall in the Church of the Nativity, blocking Catholic access to the shrine of Jesus' birthplace. Five years later, they pried up a silver star that French Catholics had put there. But the nastiest conflict was over keys. By tradition, the Orthodox monks kept the keys to the church's front door, with the Catholics possessing a less prestigious key to an interior door. I mean, you can tell just from looking at those. That... Actually, I believe you can't actually see my mouse. That, the small one, is a lame key. While the big one... Oh, oh, that's, that, that's a majestic piece of keymanship right there. Hmm. Door. Angry at this slight, the two groups started a brawl in 1852 that killed several Orthodox monks. So in response to these worsening brawls, two men intervened in the conflict. Nicholas I, Tsar of Russia, and Napoleon III, recently crowned Emperor of France. But let's start yeah, with yeah, Nicholas we're, we're definitely not going to lose track of which end is which here. Mostly because... Obviously, the Russian one is the guy wearing the black. first, who was largely responsible for starting the war. By 1852, Nicholas had been on the throne for 26 years and held sway over the fastest growing empire in Europe. A military man, he grew up fascinated by his father's generals, dressed in impeccable uniforms, and slept on a cot. But perhaps <laughs> Nicholas's most prominent feature was his near religious belief in. I get the uniforms. You, I would, you, you would not catch me sleeping on a cot as a king. I know here. I I am all into the the humble living like a middle class or or lower or whatever. I'm gonna sleep on a comfortable bed. I I don't need a million palaces all over the world with more rooms than would ever actually be used. But I need a comfy bed. Restoring the Russian Empire to its former glory. 
See, Nicholas believed that as the last Orthodox power, Russia was the heir of Byzantium and Rome. And as head of sure. the Russian Orthodox hey, Church, he considered himself the protector of Orthodox Christians worldwide, including in Ottoman territory, where they did oh, indeed yeah. experience state-sponsored oppression and at times were massacred. He regularly backed Christian uprisings in Ottoman territory, such as right, the Greek right. War of Independence in 1821. This belief went hand in hand with Russia's expansionist policies, which had spent yes, nearly does. a century taking bites out of Ottoman territory. Though often done with the stated goal of protecting Orthodox Christians, these were also about expansion south. Catherine the Great herself started this pattern by capturing the Crimean Peninsula and its warm water port of Sevastopol. That port gave Russia a path to the Mediterranean, provided they passed through Ottoman territory. These lands were not. Ooh, yeah, that. I guess the whole Russian Crimea thing. I mean, it probably goes further back than this. <laughs> ...important for reaching ports, though. Nicholas also feared the increasing liberalism of the West, which he felt would undermine Russia's autocratic policies, and he wanted a strong Russia with buffer zones to keep the West at bay. Ah, uh, liberalism. One of those words that just changes definitions enough to not really mean anything. I mean, the modern definition of liberalism is usually more big government, so you'd think an autocrat would like it. Hey. Hey. Yeah, and if this is all sounding a bit familiar, a lot of historians uh, have pointed out the parallels yeah. to recent events. In fact, Crimea itself, while internationally recognized as part of Ukraine, has been occupied by Russia since 2014. Actually, and what did we do about it then, seriously? I don't even know if we talked very strongly against them. Mostly just noted that the Crimean defense minister was cute. So now that we're on the subject, as a quick aside, it did feel wrong to do this series without at least mentioning the ongoing Russian invasion mm -hmm. of Ukraine in today's day and age. One of the saddest aspects of yeah. which has been its impact on civilians. And to that end, myself and several of our team have made donations to Doctors Without Borders, who are providing treatment to civilians within Ukraine being affected by the war, ranging from emergency medicine to psychotherapy to medical evacuation. They're also working with communities of displaced this. Ukrainians currently you know residing in neighboring countries as well. So if you'd like to chip in and you are able, we'll put a link in the description. To Please do. Goodness knows I would if I could afford it. I mean, I did when it first started and I felt more in the green. Um, but I've had like no shifts for the last three weeks. So yeah to where you can help them out with all of that. Sorry for interrupting the history. It just felt important and like it had to be done. But no, I digress. It, 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 Russian it really expansion did. during the 18th and 19th centuries vastly weakened the Ottoman state. Kofiard is an interesting choice. I, I, I Somehow I that, somehow I saw it. I, I don't think this is the first time. That, I'm pretty sure this is not the first time that in this in this very one that they used Clifford. Right? They, they, they were using Clifford earlier, weren't they? I feel like they were. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting choice. And to Nicholas, there was only one way it would end. During a meeting with British officials in 1844, he referred to the Ottoman Empire as a sick man, a man dying. And when that man died, he said, the powers would have to figure out what action to take. This became known as the Eastern Question. What should Europe do about the seemingly crumbling Ottomans? Nicholas wanted to partition the Ottoman Empire, or, you know, to have Russia take it over entirely. And he saw Britain as a potential ally in this, believing that the British would yeah. be happy to see the Ottomans fall, and that after... It's, it's a shame, because it's... I keep, I keep shaking my new webcam. It's such an interesting and historically important piece of land, and Crimea is so clearly important, and yet... You really can see how it kind of becomes obsolete once we start getting, once we start really getting uh, colonies and to a, to a less imperialistic and horrible and colony um, standpoint, just overseas trade. I mean, unless the Ottomans had managed to keep control of. Probably not just the Suez Canal. They need to keep control of, like, most of the Red Sea. Um, if they were able to do that, they'd be fine. They'd be golden. They, they could start throwing all kinds of cool stuff into Southeast Asia and Africa. Um, but they didn't, because sick man. 
This is incidentally why I always do that when I play Crusader Kings. After any partition, they would naturally back Russia's claim over the holy sites. I mean, the UK wouldn't side with France, right? Especially not while it's governed by Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew. Though in this line of thinking, he was vastly mistaken. Turned That's out, bad. Britain increasingly saw Russia as the danger, not France. Also at the time, Russia and Britain were engaged in sort of a cold war, known mm. as the Great Game, each trying to influence governments in Central Asia. The British government also harbored fears that Russia... I guess that's just another thing that doesn't change, because, I mean, that's what we did with our Cold War, with Russia. And now with mostly China, China's definitely winning the influence game. I mean, there's definitely an interesting argument you can make that China is writing checks they can't cash in this influence game, but, I mean, that that that's a level of play beyond... Anything I can really properly comment on. Most of us can comment on. Most of the people who think they can comment on that, who we think can comment on that, can't comment on it. Because it's just many very deep and complicated checks. I think if China knew for sure whether or not they could cash those checks in the first place, things to be a little less weird for them right now. I'm not saying they wouldn't. Um, I'm just saying it's it's complicated. Politics! It's not just lying about what you're going to accomplish in non-autocratic nations. Plans to move on India and worried that if the Ottoman Empire collapsed, Russia's dominance of the East would upset the post-war Napoleonic balance of powers. In other words, the British were committed to keeping Turkey around as a check against Russia, and even supported that by pushing the Ottomans into a reform program. Cool, more stuff that you can kind of see now. Meant that to isn't strengthen working. the state, but Britain's biggest worry were Russian naval bases in Crimea. Using them, Russia could launch a strike against Istanbul before France or Britain could dispatch a fleet to defend it, effectively collapsing the Ottoman state at will. Mm. Finally find that thing that you've always wanted hey, in a place on apartments.com. Hey, no apartments.com thing still. I didn't think I had time for a master's, but with WGU, I can move through an accredited business Good degree for you. as soon as I ma by contrast, on the other side of this religious issue was Napoleon III, who'd been elected the, the first president end. of France in 1848. However, mm. then in 1852, he'd lost the election and instead of conceding, you know, just declared himself emperor. However, As his coup was do. on shaky ground and depended We're heavily trying. on the support of traditional Catholics. So, in an attempt to mollify this political bloc and bring France back to its international standing, he dispatched a famously confrontational diplomat to the Ottoman court in order to insist here. that a 1740 treaty granted France the right name? to govern holy sites. Then when the Ottomans agreed with France, an Hilsi equally inflammatory Russian it's ambassador countered thing. with a claim based on treaties they claimed nullified that 1740 treaty. So now the Ottomans, fearing Russia might actually declare war, switched their position and granted them the holy sites. Not As ready to back do. down and to prove a Again, point, his France then dispatched the 80-gun repeats... warship Charlemagne Modernity to sail into the Black Sea. Modernity repeats history. A clear violation of treaties that stated warships could not do this in peacetime. Unable to resist this act of gunboat diplomacy, the Ottomans then switched their position again, <laughs> renaming France the protector of the holy sites, to which Russia responded with invasion. In July 1853, Russian troops surged across the Danube, occupying the territories the of Wallachia and Moldavia, which were jointly governed by Russia and the Ottomans. And at this point, Nicholas considered the war as good as over, certain that Britain and France would not support the Turks against fellow Europeans. He was wrong again. On October 16th, the Ottomans, with the support of Britain and France, declared war on Russia. World War Zero had begun, and we'll get into all those details next week. Wait, narrow them out. So, basically, to uh, to summarize, if I understand everything correctly, um, Russia wanted Crimea. Uh, Crimea was someone else's, who was not uh, in the strongest position at that time. Um, said someone, the Ottomans. Um, kind of played a kind of political flip-flopping game to, to, to France and Britain and to Russia, back and forth and back and forth, trying to get the best bet until Russia it was just like, 
like, yeah, contract is only a piece of paper. We're going to take all that stuff anyway. Uh, assuming that um, France and the UK would be like, yeah, our treaties pertain. We'll protect them. Are also only a piece of paper because we don't actually want to go to war. But then they did. So that's what happened. Uh, the, the, the classic, classic, do you really want to, I don't think you actually, I don't think you'll actually go to war. And then they either don't or they do. Uh, which is that big kind of question mark we're, we're all living in right now with the Ukraine again. Yep. Anywho, um, go ahead, give me a like, give me a comment, subscribe, share to your friends. All these things would be enormously helpful to me. Um, it was fun doing this. Uh, my channel is, it, 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 right now it's mostly just reactions. Um, I'll probably invest my time into doing other things if... You know, once I, I have enough people, once I have enough subscribers to make me feel like I can justify investing my time just to make a lot of stuff on here and editing um, right now, that kind of thing. Um, so right now, it is it's mostly reactions, mostly to homestarrunner.com of all things, for anyone who remembers that. And if you don't remember that, but you're curious about that, this is a good place to do that. Otherwise, um... I think the the other big thing I've done recently is I've got uh, reactions to um, the Murder Drone series, which is all on YouTube. Uh, so check it out. Check out the original source first. Uh, Glitch Studios, I think they're called. Um, and have a good evening.